So I'm not going to cover all these things. So InfoSec Train is, uh, is a finest security and technology training consulting company. For you can say approximately six years, they are driving such training. Maybe you can say technical or management types of training. They are actually driving. They have you know, fantastic endorsement, more than six years. And uh, more than 30,000 professionals already they have a train. There are some trusted clients, you know, like uh, your uh, TCS, Ericsson, Big Four, NITT, SBI, government sector, all. Now, why InfoSec train is important? If you want to enroll and if you go for any certification, they are able to. And they're going to uh, provide a trainer, which industry expert. See, there are two types of the trainer. One, who is having industry experience, that means day-to-day -day challenges, what you are facing, they know. And according to this, they are going to actually explain the huge cases. The one, you know that they are complete training back. So here you will get industry uh, trainer. They are going who is going to explain all huge cases, which currently, you know, they are actually facing. Now, today's agenda is CSSP overview, CSSP exam structure, which I'm not going to cover too much because already you know that. I'm going to cover mainly question and answer, what type of question you will confront in exam, and what preparation strategy you have to focus if you want to clear the certification. Okay, so first, CISSP, you know that Certified Information System Security Professional. Generally, you know, in my session, always I emphasize, you have to understand what you want to achieve, right? If you are going any city, right, you have to know the whole city background, right? Where you have to visit, where you will get, you know, best restaurant and what you can say transform transport mode you have to take to travel. So same like CISSP. If you understand the meaning of CISSP and what is the objective of CISSP, you are able to understand, you can say, you know, that means you can say you are more than 80% work has done. In CISSP, we are not going to cover or CISSP itself is not going to cover which you don't know. You know each and everything. You know what is change management process. You know what is vulnerability management process. You know what is incident management process. You know what is risk management process. If you have a more than 10 years experience and if you're working in cybersecurity, you know all these terms. But you have to know how you are going to use all these process in your environment. So just I will take two to three minutes and think like this. You know, in your organization, right? In your organization, maybe. It completely depends on you are working in big organization, right? We are more than 10,000 assets uh, you have, or maybe you're working in a small organization, you have more than 100 assets, or you can say less than 100 assets. But the process, but the you can say your PPT, people, process, and technology is the same. Maybe a little bit up and down. Happen. Second, what is your approach all about? If you're working in services, right? If you're working in manufacturing, if you're working in banking sector, if you're working in health industry, right? Your complete security posture will change and how you are going to actually reduce the risk within a risk appetite, right? So you can think like this. In a, your organization, you have a age router, right? After age router, maybe you have a firewall. And firewall in HA, right? Firewall in HA because behind the firewall, you have a, your critical, uh, critical uh, you can say asset or critical application, which actually used by customer and client, or you can say your whole business completely depends on those application because it's internet facing and you know your more than you can say thousand pool of customer using those uh, services. Okay. So you have a HA as a, you know, in the firewall, then you have your switches, right? You have a switches, then you have another firewall. I'm just 
drawing a small infrastructure, right? This is also a chip. You have a router. Then you have your AD, your database, your print server, your trusted zone application, right? Your uh, Linux server, or you can say Windows server. You have this is your DMG. This is your DMG where you have your web application, web firewall. You have your jump host, right? You have your DNS server. You have your DSCP server, right? You have your file server. You have your IDS IPS. You have your VPN, right? You have your access points. You have your DLP. You have your SIM solution, right? All security solutions is there and your asset is there. Now think like this. And what is CISSP perspective? I'm going to explain through your organization. Don't think about this infrastructure. Think like your organization infrastructure where multiple users trying to access your organization environment, right? Trying to access your organization environment. Maybe you have a cloud services also. Right, you have a, you can say a 10, 10 or 100 servers on cloud, which is used by you or your customer. Right, that means maybe you are using multi cloud also. Now, how you are going to manage and how you are going to maintain the whole security posture, you have to think like this. And this is a whole, you can say, CISSP objective. Because if you see the CISSP, the most important word is there. Security professional, right? Generally, in our organization, there are two types of role is there. The first, you can say your security professional, and second, your security practitioner. So, first, you have to understand what is the difference between both. Security practitioner, you can think like this your operational team, right? They are trying to resolve all operational, you can say, tickets, or maybe if any incident happened, they are going to actually re resolve. But your role as a security professional, that means you have to think like security professional. Now, what is the role of security professional? They are going to understand what is the risk before going to take any decision. Right? If any incident happened, you cannot direct take action. You have to think what is the risk, what is the impact, and what solution actually required. To implement this perspective, you have to right now. If you see here, if this is your organization, right, and you are a security head or CISO of this organization, how you are going to ensure your risk appetite, or you can say your risk is within a risk appetite or within a risk uh, within an acceptable, right? It's not only risk. You can you can think like this. If you are going to reduce the risk, you have to apply different different measures, different different counter measures. You have to drive different different security program. If I'm talking about security program, mm -hmm. is, can you mute please? Any initiative, any initiative taken by you which reduce a risk within this character. Just a second, please. Just give me. Oh, thank you. Okay. So you can think like this. You are going to join organization as a security head or security professional. What do we need to look? First, you have to understand what is nature of business. Nature of business or you can say, what is business objective? BO. According to business object objective, you are going to develop your InfoSec strategy. Your InfoSec strategy completely align with your business objective. Now, think like this. You are working in banking sector. In the banking sector, you have a more than 10 application. At that 10 application, providing services to customer and client. Or you can say all banking transaction. Right? So if you are providing services, your core service, uh, you can say business is providing services to customers about transaction. So what is your business objective? 
business objective to provide seamless service right seamless services or maybe you are going to increase pool of uh, customer and client currently you can say we have a uh, 100k customer now within one year your target you are going for 200 now as a security professional how you can add value to the business because you know that security is a non functional requirement business can exist without security but security cannot exist without business if business is there then you know you can say organization going to hire us because we have security problems so how you can add value there you can add value to maintain ci confidentiality integrity and availability that means if customer want to access this application they can access right this application available for legitimate user 24 by 7 365 days all customer all your customer and client if trying to access a data the data must confidential and also during transit no any modification right so you have to provide all security measures to ensure ci now if talking about yeah you know your security measures maybe you are going to apply administrative control maybe you are going to apply physical control or maybe you are going to apply technical control. In CISSP, always think PPT. That means people first, then process, and last you have to take a tech. But the issue here, because we are working in many years, many decades in, you can say, cybersecurity, info security, and our mindset directly to focus on technology. No. And this is, you can say, the you know, this is the issue for all security professionals who is going for CSSP exam. First, you have to look if you are going to resolve your issue or reduce the risk to people, any gap in people, yes or no. If yes, then you have to fix. Any gap in process, then you have to improve your process. And after that, technology see your technology weakness only you can say fixed by technology same your process weakness only fixed by process technology cannot fix your people related issues or your process related issues so if you are getting any question in exam first you have to think any risk due to people any risk due to process and after that technology. the three things you have to remember okay you are able to easily clear cssp exam. cssp is a not tough exam it's all about mindset how you are going to tackle so you can think like this you know the whole organization and definitely you know that we have a multiple domain where you have to focus so it's not only if you are working for many years in grc right then you can actually clear CISSP. Definitely, you have to put lots of effort to do this because we have a eight domain, right? If you want to ensure security of your organization, only GRC will not, right? You have to know how you are going to protect your data, how you are going to classify your data, and due, you know, according to classification, how you are going to implement your control. Maybe administrative maybe physical or maybe technical right so all these things you have to focus when you are going to going to start cissp journey or maybe already you have a start to clear cissp exam okay so you know that in our organization we have a different different roles right what role we have we have a grc team is completely focus on governance risk and compliance right without effective governance you cannot drive or you cannot implement any effective info security program right if talking if i am actually referring info security program means maybe if you are going for password policy implementation maybe you are going for firewall implementation maybe you are going to configure any firewall any policy in firewall 
maybe you are going for security ordinances or everything is approved right so you need effective governance right then second how you are going to protect your asset protection of asset if you don't know what you have definitely you are not able to protect right if you don't know how many or you know how much kg gold you have in your house how you are going to protect the same so you have to know what you have according to this you are going to provide protection okay sometimes maybe you are going to develop your protection mechanism or maybe you are going to buy we have only two option right for example if you want to implement a firewall or if you want to implement dlp or if you want to implement ids ips you have a two option to you have to develop your own or you can reach out to oem vendor and purchase it right so you have also you have to know if you are going to develop what the best practices you have to implement during development of all these systems point number 1 second you are going to purchase right you have plot rfp and you are going to purchase then you have to know what best practices you have to implement to going to purchase these solution this is also important this is your work info security professional task now you acquire any product or any tool or any you can say technology to implement in your organization so you have to know how you are going to integrate with your existing setup right because if you are going to implement dlp you implement a firewall these all you can say system uh, solution dlp firewall idea ips going to integrate with your existing server going to integrate with your existing router how they are going to communicate you have to ensure you have to ensure that means your network security part okay now integration done so what we need to do you have to give access who will going to access only l1 is going to access or l1 l2 l3 going to access or we are going to give access to ciso also or you are going to give access to different you can say application on our system or our, on our or infra guy right so your access control work here now you have given access so what we need to do you have to test effectiveness of your control your control is working as per your expectation of right i have implemented firewall or dlp or ids ip they are able to protect they are able to you know meet my requirement then you have to test now testing done yes my product is meeting my requirement so what we need to do operation start using when you start using any product or any technology what you will get you will get vulnerability also so you have to do patch management you will get new upgrade so you have to do you know patching if you are going for patching so what we need to do you have to follow change management process you have to follow configuration management process maybe you will get some incident you have to follow incident management process so all these process you have to follow when you are going to use now you are using for last 5 years so what happened end of life of end of support happened so you are going for decom also right you are going for decom everything is a part of your operation right so you can say this is all about domain 1 this is all about domain 2 this is all about domain 3 this is all about domain 4 this is all about domain 5 this one 6 this one seven that means your whole cssp domain cover your organization operation if you will think maybe currently you are working in grc maybe you are currently you are working as a network security engineer or network uh, you can say security lead but for cssp you have to understand all these things not deep level but high level high level you have to understand okay so this is all about your cissp domain 8 i am not covering here domain 8 definitely if you are going for any development right maybe you are going to buy any application or maybe you are developing application you have a in house developer right so you are going to develop that time you have to use all those best practices 
right? All development best practices. Maybe you are going for DevSecOps, or maybe you are going for Agile method, or maybe you are going for waterfall. What method is applicable? Maybe you are going to integrate CI CD file. Everything part of domain. So if you see the CSSP domain, domain one to eight is a continuous domain which every day we are using in our organization. That means domain one, you are going to develop your security governance. And domain eight, you are going to implement a uh, domain seven, sorry, you are going to implement your security. So security professional role you have to understand. I'm going in high level. Generally, in my classes, it took more than 45 minutes to only explain what is CSSP all about. So security professional, understand the risk, do risk assessment, right? Understand the regulation rules and regulation and according to this they're going to develop solution going to develop solution and that solution reduce the risk within a risk capital and this solution help to achieve business goals help to achieve business goals so your role as a cissp is a security professional that means you are going to develop a strategy, info security a strategy. You are going to develop info security governance. You are going to develop info security tactical plan. And you are going to implement as an operation. Who is going to implement? Practitioner. Or you can say implementer. So in, in exam, you will get both options. Practitioner option also, and you can say professional option also. So you have to choose professional uh, option. So this is the hidden secret. Okay. So let's, what you are going to discuss already, I have explained. You know CSSP all about? Oh, little bit slow, I think. Oh, sorry. So you know that CSSP all about? Now I'm just highlighting why CSSP types of certification is required for info security professor. I'm giving real time example. Nowadays, many of you, definitely you have a job. Nowadays, any job role, maybe two years experience or 10 years experience, you know that hiring manager or HR is asking, security professional must have a CISSP, CCSP, CSUM, CSA series. I have a different opinion. This is a wrong practice. CSSP certification for management role actually. But this is a problem in, in industry. It's actually going on. This is a not good practice. But if you don't have, if you don't, uh, you know, if you don't have a CISSP certification or CCSP or CSA, CSM series type of certification, definitely you will not get call from HR because their criteria is all about you have to have a CSSP certification. The chances of call is less. Now, if you will not get called, definitely you are not able to showcase your skills. Right? Maybe you know better than one CSSP holder about particular, you can say, uh, domain. If you are working in, in many years in identity and access management, you have a better understanding compared to another participant who is having one year, one year or two years experience in identity and access management. But you will not get called that guy will get up. So definitely he trying to showcase, you know, his skill set and he will get chance. He will get an offer. He will get a job as well. It's easy to switch. So this is the one criteria I am actually observing for last, you can say, three to four years. And uh, so that such type of certification is a must, right? Not all types of certification, but mainly CISSP, CCSP, CSM types of certification is important nowadays. Okay. Domain coverage already I have covered, you know. You have eight domains. Now weightage is there. Generally, I say you have to forget all these weightage because you know that it's a CAT based exam. In CAT based, you know, next question completely depends on what you have respect. So if you are weak in one domain, for example, domain, maybe you'll get 20, 25 questions also from domain, right? If you are strong in 
domain one, you will get maximum seven to 10 question. And after that, you will not get any question from domain one also. Okay. So in CISSP, because of CAT base, you have to have strong hold in all domain. Not deep level, shallow level. That means high level. If someone is saying, okay, what is SAMR? What is single sign up? What is, you can say, you know, risk management. You are able to speak four to five minutes about this high level. No need to, you know, go in deep how you are going to do risk management scenario base or you are going to use four phases, you are going for qualitative or quantitative, it's not required in detail or you can say hands on. You have to have experience about management level. You have to speak. You are able to understand because CISSP itself, you can say role itself is uh, management role. They are able to understand the technical stuff and they are able to communicate in business, right? Because CISSP CSSP professional making bridge between top leadership and your operation. So operation team needs some, some you can say technology. CSSP professional understand and they are going to communicate to top leadership. That means board about those technology as a business, you can say language. How you can say firewall, DLP help you, uh, you know, if going to implement how firewall and DLP help our business. So this is all about. So you know that technical stuff you have to know in high level and how you are going to communicate. Okay. Now what we need to do for preparation, right? You know that your exam structure again change. You will get multiple choice questions. That means core option you will get. Minimum 100 question and maximum 150. Recently they have changed. You will get three hours to do this. So that means minimum 100, you will get exam will stop and test, uh, you will get, uh, you know, you will get result pass or fit, right? Maybe you are doing very good, then exam will stop 100, or maybe you are doing very bad, then exam will, uh, you know, stop within 100, or you can say 100. And after that, you will get result. If you are doing, you can say average, exam will go 120, 130, 150 also. And after that, they are going to showcase your result, maybe pass or maybe fail. Cat base already I have highlighted, and I'm not going in detail because it will take a huge time. And what is what is your approach when you are going to uh, going for cat base exam? Uh, you know, in cat base, just I'm highlighting. Initially, you have to do better. If you will do you know bad in initial questions, definitely. It's very difficult for you to overcome. Okay. So it advisable initially 10 to 20 question is most crucial. You have to minimum score 90% if you want to clear this certification. No penalty for guessing, but you cannot review. That means if you will respond, right? If you will submit your response after that, you will get next question and you cannot review. That means review option is not. If you response, answer A, submit, is a final. Okay. All you know, I see to have a same uh, pattern. Now, how you are going to prepare? If you are going to read material, it's advisable minimum one time reading page by page. But it's it advisable you have to do minimum 3.5k questions. 3.5k questions you have to do if you want to clear CSSP certification. If you read 10 times Cybex CVK book, it will not help you if you will not do minimum 3.5k questions. Now, here is one hidden secret I am highlighting. Please don't use you can say, you know, unlegitimate resource to practicing questions because, you know, internet, if you type CISSP questions, you will get ample of new website. But if you start evaluating more than 50 to 60% answer is wrong. So if you'll practice, definitely you are going to learn something different. And that would also create a problem in exam. So if you're going to use 
any resource for practicing questions, please use they are verify. You know, you can discuss with professional who is already clear exam. They can actually also guide you, right? Uh, to uh, to all those resources if you are going to. Use. But three point five three question must you have to now. When you are going to do questions, what is your approach? Definitely. Next slide, we have a 10 question we are going to discuss and I'm going to explain how you are going to actually, uh, you know, eliminate the option. This approach is a must if you want to clear CSSP certification. Okay. So 3.5K questions, your own notes is the most important. So when you are going to read a book or maybe you are attending any session, you have to prepare your your own notes. If you're going to use others, others notes also, it's a fine. But your own notes is diamond mine. And three and four days before exam, you have to actually refer your own notes. The third point, we have a different point also, visualization, how you are going to do. So one week before exam, trying to just close your eye and trying to recall all those topics, right? Which is stable in exam. Generally, we have a hot topics, right? 100% those topics is stable in exam. I'm giving some 10 topics now, right? Like GDPR. You'll get three to four questions in exam. So if you know, you'll get question, you know, in exam. From GDPR, you have to have a strong, right? TPM, you'll get one and two questions for TPM. You'll get, uh, you know, your security policy or rules like your Bella Padola, right? DIBA, so you have to have very strong, right? If you know data remnants, you'll get one and two questions, right? Data, your... Uh, uh, Degauzy, you will get one and two questions, right? You will get uh, risk management, three to four questions. BCPDR, three to four questions. These topics, 100% in exam. So if you know such topic list, right? Definitely, it's actually easy for you to clear this exam, where you have to focus more. Because initially, in CISSP, you will get question from these topics, one, like risk management framework. RMF, NIST, you'll get two questions, minimum, right? BCPDR, you'll get approx four questions. SDLC phases, seven to eight questions, you'll get. Cross-site scripting and forgery, you'll get one and two questions. SQL injection attack, one and two questions, right? You'll get uh, SLC phases, two to three questions. You will get cryptography, three to four questions, right? Digital signature, PKI, 100% in exam. So if you know all these topics, it's actually easy for you to keep it certification, where you have to focus more. You have to focus more. So such list you have to prepare and make a notes and refer before your exam. Okay, so let's say I'm not covering because generally, when I drive four hour session only to understand what is CISSP, CISSP approach, and what is our approach, and you can say preparation strategy. Now we have just 40, 45 minutes time. So let's, we can discuss some questions. When you are practicing questions, what is your approach and how you are going to encounter all those questions? Do's and don'ts, sorry, I missed. Don'ts already I have responded. Uh, I have uh, you know explained about the questions practice. Please don't repeat the same question again and again, right? It's also actually negative point. One question, one time. Trying to understand the question and then you can respond. Okay. So first question, please try and response. Always remember, search which one is wrong. Don't try to identify which one is right. Understand which one is wrong. Understand and identify the keywords. And after that, you have to respond. Read question carefully. Then you are able to 
response. What question is saying? A financial institute rely on critical application. This is the keyword. Critical application. Okay. Critical application for processing customer transaction. That means this application is critical. You cannot. Uh, you can say you cannot, um, you know, for go for any downtime because they're critical. Okay, availability is a must. Then during a routine vulnerability scan, okay, an input validation flaw is identified. So input valid validation is countermeasure of what type of attack? Forgery and SQL and another buffer over, right? So such type of attack. Okay. The organization CISO want to address issue promptly. That means immediately he trying to address. He is not looking for long term remediation. He is looking for short term remediation, which reduce the risk. Okay. So this is a keywords. So what is the keywords? Just I am trying to identify the critical application. So availability is a most input validation is a flaw. He is looking for prevent promptly. Okay. Which of the flowing actions would most effective quickly mitigate it? Again, quick temporary patch, you can say. Okay. Implement new rules of WAF, web application firewall. You can whitelist, right? It's also actually help for input validation. So you can park because immediately you can do. You have to just raise the tickets and a WAF team will going to just create a new rule. So immediately you can actually perform. So you can park this. Temporary restrict access to vulnerable services. Temporary restrict access to vulnerable services to reduce exposure. If you will temporarily restrict, what happen? Availability will issue. You are not able to. Your customer will not able to access. So we cannot do this one out. IDS only detect but not protect but you are going to protect, right? So this one out, apply patch to application source code to fix. It's actually long term. Plan. If you're going for source code, then you have to follow a release management process, right? That means your team will develop, you know, or fix the source code flaws in non forward environment. And after that, they are going in prod. So it will take time. So here, Immediate action. So, what is this? Is a right answer. If he's saying, you know, long term, that this is a right. Answer. But here saying most effective, quickly you have to do. So, this one is a right answer. So, so you have to think like this. If you're getting any question in exam, okay. Here also you have to look into keywords. What question is saying? As the CISO of an organization, you must evaluate your system. Resilience against potential internal external threat. Internal external threat, maybe you can say, you know, natural disaster also, maybe attack also. Okay. While maintaining continuity of critical operation. Continuity means they are talking about BCP, business continuity. Okay. Without disrupting business activity. Without disrupting business activity. Okay. Which are the flowing assessment? That means test they are talking about. See, see, SSP exam is all about English test. Okay. So they will play with words. Okay. So which of the flowing assessment would be the most appropriate to achieve this object? What is objective? Objective is to test my BCP against internal external threat. And we need, uh, you can say, you can say effectiveness, more effective method. Okay. So answer D is a not because question saying without disruption. You know that if you go for full, full disruption or full interruption test, what happened? You have to disrupt. So this one out completely D is out. Now we have a walkthrough simulation and path. Walkthrough, you know that just like tabletop, right? Tabletop, no business disruption, definitely. But you are able to get result more effective 
No, right? You can park this. Simulation also is a just one type of walkthrough only, right? Where you are going to create us activity and simulation. And uh, you can you can get a result, right? You can get a result. And next you have a parallel. Parallel that means you are going to mimic your system. Now answer is C is the most effective. Will get more result because question is saying critical operation without disruption. Simulation non-critical. Walkthrough also you can say is a no impact. Parallel also you are not actually downing your critical operation. And parallel provide most effective result compared to A and B. So answer is C because most evaluate question is talking about. And in critical also you are not going to disrupt your critical operation. Right? So answer is C. Best answer is C. Okay. A and B also, you can say, is not uh, impacting your critical operation, but it's not effective compared to parallel. Okay. Try next. Physical security also part of CISSP. You will get four questions in exam, minimum three to four questions in exam. So one question I, I thought, let's put in physical security, you have to know. Identify the keywords, then you are able to do. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. Question is saying a security consultant is assessing option to guarantee for critical during power outage. The objective is to implement a live, this is the keyword, live inline redundancy. Live or inline that immediately takes over if primary power source fails. You know that in our organization have UPS. Right? Your primary fail, UPS will take a load immediately. Right? So let's search. Because battery is all about UPS. See, generator you have to start. Or you know that generator also start automatically, but it will take 8 to 10 seconds delay also you are going to put. But it's not live. Question is saying live. So which one is live? Battery is alive because you have a UPS. This is UPS. Your power supply is going to connect with the UPS. And after that, it's going to connect with your critical server. For example, and this is live. Disruption also happened. Your power backup is there. There are two types of UPS connection. One live and second is on live. That means manually you have to start. Active and passive is also called. Active and passive. This is active. That means your power supply going to connect with UPS and UPS going to actually provide power to your critical system. Answer is C. Cloud-based infrastructure. Okay. This is a keyword and BCP, business continuity. Prioritize. If you are going, think like this. If you are security assessor and you are going to do assessment about cloud infrastructure, context of BCP. So what you will do? What you will prioritize first? What you will do? First, you have to understand the contract. If you don't know what contract you have, what services you are using, right? In contract is mentioned, no? you are going for SaaS, PaaS, or AS, right? But here saying cloud-based infrastructure. It's not clearing which services you are going to access. If you don't know what you are going to access, you don't know what is your roles and responsibility, right? If you don't know what is your roles and responsibility, definitely you are not able to evaluate. First, you know no? what is your roles and responsibility. <coughs> Sorry. What is your ownership in BCP? Because your BCP completely changed, 
in SaaS, PaaS, and NaaS, right? In SaaS, you know that user level access you have, right? So your BCP completely changed. Yes or no? Tim. Okay. So first you have to understand contractual requirement, obligation for maintaining service continuity and your BCP completely mentioned in your MSA. Right. If you are going to sign any cloud and cloud is the most important in CISSB. Six to seven question you will get from cloud. So basic fundamental cloud you have to know. What is software as a service? What is your, your responsibility as a consumer, as a provider? You have to. Okay. I'm going a little fast because see, demanding uptime guaranteed from is talking about SLA. SLA is a part of MSA. So first you have to know MSA, what you have. Then you can understand SLA. Right? BCP DR test with when you will test. If you know what services you are using, then you are able to test. If you are using SaaS base, what is what what you will test? Because not under you, BCP DR not under you, right? So you have to first understand what services you are going to use. So understanding the services, definitely you have to refer contract. Okay. Most important topic, SOC, three to four question in exam. So if you're going for CISSP, and this is a universal topic, you will get in all exam. So if you're going for CISSP, you have to very good understanding about SOC 1, SOC 2, SOC 3. Okay, let's try this. A healthcare organization needs to verify that potential cloud service provider has appropriate control in place and that these control are consistently operating as intended. Okay, so appropriate control. Okay. What reports should be most critical for organization to access? Definitely when you are going to take any services from cloud, maybe going for AWS, Azure, or GC, you have to ask independent third party audit reports to understand the, you know, you can say the whole, whole uh, you can say, you know, your, uh, your security posture because SOC to report cover 14 domain and more than 240 or 250 controls. Right? It's depend upon nature of the audit. Okay. Nature of the audit. So no need to know how you are going to perform SOC 1 or SOC 2 or SOC 3 audits, but you have to know what is SOC 1, what is SOC 2, what is SOC 3. But question is talking about consistently operate appropriate control in place. That means effectiveness also asking and design also asking. So effectiveness and design, which one present? SOC 2, type 2. SOC 1, type 1, financial. Is it talking about health industries and no financials or this one out? SOC 3 is a for general public. You will get high level reports. So this one also out. Now we have a type one and type two. So type one only you will get design of one. What is the design? Right. Type two will get design and effectiveness board. So here saying consistently operating. Operating is all about effectiveness. Answer is C. Definitely question is talking about SDLC. Right. DevSecOps to improve security. So you know that security must consider in initial phase. This is a statement. So let's search it throughout all stages. Definitely, right? Maybe you are going for planning. Maybe you are going for functional requirement. Maybe you are going for design. Maybe you are going for development. Maybe you are going for uh, evaluation and testing, right? Maybe you are going for transition in operation, or maybe you are going for <coughs> Everywhere you have to consider security, right? So we can park at the start. This is also a start level initial phase. During the final stage, no, right? After the software is deployed. So you know that after deployment, if you will integrate and if you will consider it's actually biggest risk. So this one also. Out. So A and B, definitely you can select A because B cover A. Okay. 
all stage you have to consider answer is a okay try next right because risk assessment why we are doing risk assessment because every day risk may be changed or you know that every day new threats new types of security uh, solution you are going to implement all these things actually good right answer is c answer is c because the statement is very clear what is the primary objective of risk management to reduce the risk within a risk appetite okay when you will perform risk management or risk assessment is a compliance requirement annual you have to perform or any change happen now this is a statement you have to remember for exam perspective you will get a one question like this okay so to account of constant evaluation of business threat that means business threat is changing so you have to do regular interval right so that we are going to do okay compared to a b and c a b and d this one is relevant so this is a answer okay question is talking about what is the most appropriate action system owner the system owner you know that we have a roles and responsibility we have a data owner we have a data custodian or you can say data controller or data processor okay to take when a specific piece of pia personal data talking about right pia no longer need no longer need that means data retention they are talking about okay let's try erase it once retain period ends okay we can park anonymize the data but they are talking about no no longer need maybe retention period has been finished so we cannot anonymize right so this one out securely archive you cannot archive because my retention period is 2 years already finished so what we need to do so this one also out reassess whether it is still need to be retained is can park now what is the best you can choose here talking about system owner system owner is a nothing is a data custodian right he is going to protect he cannot erase because he can reach out to data owner and say we are going to erase or not right so that you have to reaccess right maybe your retention period has been finished but maybe the data is having some value so you have to do impact assessment and after that you have to take action in our organization also doing the, uh, doing the same thing right if you are going for uh, you know uh, destruction we are doing impact assessment right so first you have to reassess so this one is right answer okay okay next try this comment team read carefully question is talking about which of the following factors should be evaluated first before deciding destruction see your integrity validity is the same okay both out i am going to destroy so what we will do i you have to maintain confidentiality right we have to maintain confidentiality if you are going to destroy so that you know cloud data destruction we are going for encrypt and that data erasure we are going to follow right so first we have to maintain the confidentiality of data right so that we are going for maybe uh, you can say purging or degauging or data uh, you know you physical destruction we are going to maintain confidentiality okay online retail company needs to grant the continuous access okay to its e commerce platform even during unexpected system failure high traffic event to achieve this is a 24 by 7 talking right okay availability and minimize downtime which of the flowing options should cold 24 by 7 we cannot do right we need minimum one week to do so this one out hot active passive right approx 2 hours but here saying 24 by 7 so this one also out periodic testing this is not out mirroring that means you have a primary site you have a secondary site this one down automatically it will lock no impact 
But if question is talking about cost, right, then you have to again look into questions. But they are not talking about costing part, right? They are talking about 24 by 7. So that you can go mirroring. Okay.